Hi, uh, my name is Abia. I am the program manager at CTED. Um, as usual with all webinars, uh, what we do is just check if everyone can hear me properly. So if you can, um, there's going to be a chat option at the bottom of your screen. Okay, great. So I got one, yes. All right, that's perfect. Okay, great. Um, so thank you so much for joining us. We're very excited about this webinar by Ms. Julie Bond from University of South Florida. Uh, so uh, after each research project finishes, uh, we do a CTED webinar uh, and CTED is actually a, the Center for Transportation Equity Decisions and Dollars, um, a US DOT funded university transportation center. Um, and so, like I said, whenever a research project finishes, uh, we require the researcher to do a webinar, and this is one of them, and we're very excited about this one. Um, so just a little bit brief introduction about Ms. Julie Bond. She's a senior research associate at the Center for Urban Transportation Research at the University of South Florida. Uh, she has over 20 years of experience in transportation research and program management, and serves as the principal investigator for multiple projects, including this one, of course. Her research interests include bicycle and pedestrian safety, social marketing, and communications. She also serves as program director for Bike Walk Tampa Bay, an organization she launched four years ago and Best Workplaces uh, for Commuters, a national recognition program uh, for employers offering high-level commuter benefits to their employees. She holds a Master of Public Administration from the University of South Florida. So, um, uh, before I actually ask Julie to come uh, to um, start her presentation, she actually asked me to tell you about a poll. So at the bottom of your screen, there's going to be a polls option. And if you click that, you can then access the three questions in the poll. And we would very much, very much insist for you to answer them. You can answer them now or throughout the presentation. And then at the end, we'll just do a recap of, of the percentages and things like that. So please do go ahead and, um, and answer that poll. Okay, so um, Julie, uh, the screen is yours. Can you hear us? Yes. Hi, okay. bye. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much for that introduction. And thank you for announcing the polls. If you could take those, that would be great. So we know a little bit more about our audience. It looks like we have a great crowd looking at the number of attendees. So I'm excited to present our project. And so with that, I'll begin. So Moving communities forward, social marketing and social change for transportation uh, is was a CTED project and it was focused on education through workshops and they were held at three locations across the country. Education's an impactful tool for current and future decision makers as we all know and the case studies that we developed from this project along with our attendees, they've helped build knowledge and competency among transportation professionals along with the private sector and others to influence sustainable mode shift changes. So what should you expect from the webinar today? I put together an agenda so that you would know what to expect because this one may be a little different from others that you have attended. So today's webinar is going to include an overview of the project, but it's also gonna include an overview of the social marketing process that we used to develop and implement these workshops. So I'll also provide you with a look at how social marketing knowledge is really impacting the field of transportation. You may be hearing about it more. Social marketing as a term among transfer transportation professionals, we found it's often a mystery to many, or it could be even confused with social media. So social marketing is not social media. They are two different terms. And so at the end of this webinar, I hope you have a better understanding of what social marketing and practice really is and looks like. And this webinar really is also about the people we met in these three US cities with transportation problems that they wanted to address. So the case study and findings that I'll give you the link at the end, you can download it and you can look through a copy after this webinar. Uh, it's called Three Cities, Three Workshops. 
and it highlights the work completed by our attendees. So finally, to complete the agenda, we'll offer a question and answer session at the end. And with that, I hope you'll enjoy the presentation as much as Amy and I enjoyed teaching the workshops. So first I wanted to give you a little bit more information about this project background. So Dr. Amy Lester and I were co-instructors for the workshops. You can see she and I in a photo there that we took at one of the workshops or someone took of us. Uh, Amy's not presenting today. However, I wanted to provide you with a little bit about her background. Um, she has a PhD in social marketing from the University of South Florida and holds additional undergraduate and graduate degrees in public health, anthropology, and biomedical sciences. So her research in interest focus on qualitative formative research, social marketing, social determinants of health, and program evaluation. So she was very instrumental in this project in developing the curriculum and also administering the workshops. Center for Urban Transportation Research, also you may hear me calling it Cutter, where we're located here in Tampa, we developed the Social Marketing and Transportation Certificate in 2013. And this was in partnership with our USF College of Public Health Center for Social Media. The goal of the certificate program is to help public sector organizations effectively apply social marketing. And that the reason for that is to reduce traffic congestion maybe, improve air quality, increase mobility, improve safety, all of those things that we are all working on in the transportation field. Now, in contrast, while commercial marketing benefits the corporate shareholder, usually, right, social marketing programs benefit society. So these programs are, are for the good of society. So they're a little bit different when you develop them. The end result of the workshops that we held were implementable programs and case studies. Again, they'll be available for you to download. Uh, this project provided a mobile workshop. It was targeted to transportation professionals and others who are seeking to change travelers' behavior to do all of those things I just talked about. For example, reducing congestion or improving safety and using a social marketing approach. So social marketing can be applied wherever there is a priority audience. I'll talk about that a little bit. And a behavior to influence. So whether it's to reduce speeding, or convince people to use public transportation, the objective in each case is to influence a behavior change. It's not about awareness, it's about actually influencing a behavior change that you can document. And social marketing seeks to develop and integrate marketing concepts with other approaches. And additional details of social marketing and its applicability to changing transportation behavior was added to address these reviews. So, Again, I'm going to go ahead and talk about what a little bit about social marketing, and then we'll go into the case studies. And you can see from the photos, you, also you can see Amy um, is uh, I took many photos. She's, she's teaching the class in Arlington, and the second one is in Boise. Okay, so to begin with, so we started this process. So we first developed an online application that included the criteria for hosting the workshop because first we have to select these locations. So they were going to be held across the United States. So, you know, we, we determined how are we going to choose these locations. So we did put out an open call for applications to host the workshop. We announced it on our various listservs and other transportation communication platforms. We did give priority to host a workshop to CTED consortium workshops or partners. And after review of the applications, uh, we did select Boise, Idaho and our host was ACHD Commuter Ride, and they are a program of the Ada County Highway District, and we did select them. Um, they were excited about this. Their mission in Boise is to promote smart commute options through education, ride share services, and effective partnerships. They really focus on transportation demand management, so they're moving goods and people rather than vehicles. And so they were chosen and they were our first workshop held last March. And I wanted to also recognize our host who we could not have held the workshops without. They were our partners in this, um, Nicole Stern and Maureen Gresham there in Boise. Um, next, we chose the city of Raleigh and we worked with staff from commute 
Smart Raleigh. Our host, um, Kathy Moline and Ann Glom, are the City of Raleigh's dedicated TDM coordinators, so Transportation Demand Management Coordinators. And the city's program there, we chose them because they offer an easy solution to help alleviate traffic congestion. They work with employers, and so they have a good program there. And then the final location uh, where we held the workshops was right there in Arlington, Texas, uh, the host of the program, the host of these uh, webinars. So CTED at the University of Texas at Arlington was our third workshop. And again, they're also the host of the webinar and the workshop sponsor. So along with that, I'll talk about um, the evaluation and the outcome when I will go through all of the case studies. Okay, so here are our three locations. And so there were different segments. So when we were working with these three locations, we talked to them about who their priority audience was going to be. Who were they going to invite to these workshops? And we actually ended up with three different segments and three different approaches, which was interesting in holding the workshops. So the Boise workshop was first held during March of 2018, uh, followed by Raleigh and then Arlington. They were both held in October. Um, we had previously scheduled Raleigh for September, but we, um, during the time we had it scheduled, there were hurricanes coming through. And so at the last minute, we had to reschedule uh, for Raleigh in October. And even with that, we had a second hurricane coming through, but we still attended and held that uh, workshop. But that was a learning lesson to maybe work around um, hurricane season for those workshops. So working with our host in Boise, the recruitment focused around transportation professionals who were al already uh, commuter rides partners. So they invited people and we were working with them. They did all the work in inviting the people to attend. Um, they talked to them. Uh, we worked with them to, to give them information about the course, but they recruited everyone and they had they decided they were going to recruit some of their clients, such as the transit agency, the city. So it focused more with transportation professionals. Now, Raleigh was completely different. So they decided their recruitment was going to focus on the private sector. So you can see in that photo, uh, there's a picture of Red Hat, if anyone's been in downtown Raleigh. Um, Red Hat is a large private sector company, and they allowed us to use their wonderful facility. They provided uh, food for the workshop, and they were really great hosts. But everyone who was invited to that um, in the beginning was a private sector employee. Um, but then they also did add at the end some public sector employees. And then because of the hurricane, we had to, uh, some of the employee, employers could not make it. So some of the uh, private sector employees did join in with the employers. And then CTED was our final location. And this model of recruitment was different again. So we had a statewide um, recruitment. Uh, plus, we did have uh, one person come from a different state. That was Virginia. So we had attendees that came from cities such as Dallas, uh, Houston, and Austin, and of course, some from Arlington. So that was a good mix where people got to know each other. And uh, they were in this, most from the state of Texas. Uh, the workshops were free for people to attend. Uh, again, we had lunch provided by the host agencies or other sponsors. That was, of course, not included in the grant, so we relied on our host to provide that to entice people to attend and make them comfortable. So attendees really did commit a substantial amount of their time through online and in-person learning and homework. We even had homework. Attendees also completed a pre-survey asking for their commitment to attend all classes, and they also answered questions regarding their knowledge of social marketing practices. So we wanted to be aware of what they knew, and we had a survey asking them that. Okay, and then this slide has three of our learning objectives to give you an idea um, of what we told them they would learn. This uh, photo is from the Arlington session. And as instructors, we were really committed to defining social marketing, making sure they understood what that was, and also identifying their appropriate, appropriate uses in transportation. So Amy and I taught them how to select a priority group for changing behavior and how to apply formative research techniques. We're striving to teach all attendees to develop a social marketing plan because that's what they were going to end up with, something that they could implement, something that they could work in small teams, something they thought was relevant and that they could take back. But most of all, we wanted to teach them something that they had a passion for. Our main goal was to leave them with tools and the confidence that they could use social marketing techniques in their jobs after they 
completed the coursework. So you can see in the photo, we also created easy to use workbooks. You can see uh, some of the PowerPoint slides are in their workbooks and uh, that was easy for them to follow along. We had worksheets, workbooks, we gave them um, a thumb drive that had all the documents in it. And as they were working along, they were actually creating a PowerPoint presentation that they were going to present to the class based on everything that they had learned and their final uh, presentation. And this is an overview of our course. So in the end, participants developed a people-centered social marketing plan, and it really relied on their insight and understanding as much on data for the creativity, design, and management of programs that strive for changes for good. You'll hear me saying that often because uh, social marketing is different in how it works from the private sector. So the course you can see combined online learning and in-person training at the three locations. We had online day one, online day two. They were both recorded so they could listen to them um, often if they wanted to review what was happening. We had in-person day one and in-person day two when we went to their location. So that gives you an idea of what the course outline looked like. So now I promised at the beginning I would give you kind of a little mini course on social marketing because I think um, you need to have a, a basic understanding before we go through the case studies. So what is social marketing? I told you it was not social media, so it's not Facebook, although you could use those in the end as part of your marketing mix. So as a distinct discipline, social marketing aims at promoting behaviors that benefit society as well as the individual. It can be applied wherever there is a priority audience, that's the audience you determine, and a behavior to influence. So whether it's to reduce speeding or convince people to use public transportation, the objective in each case is to influence that behavior change. And it does rely on multiple scientific disciplines too, to create programs. Uh, commercial marketing targets, they target purchase behaviors, product choice, and maybe also, for example, product promotion behaviors. So you're asked to buy products, maybe switch brands, talk favorably about a company, but social marketing typically targets complex, often socially controversial behaviors. Uh, so it, with delayed and distance benefits to audiences. So that makes it a little more difficult for us, right? So it may not be the same as just buying something in the private sector, um, such as buying a Coke or, um, you know, something to eat or drink. So, and often the audience that we're working with, they don't even recognize they have a problem, much less are working for a solution. And so that's just a quick overview of what social marketing is. And there's several distinctive features, and I'll go through a couple of them. The core of social marketing is its audience orientation. It seeks to understand what people want. And not only what they want, but why do they want it? And why do they do what they do? It really adopts an audience-centered approach instead of an organization-centered approach. And it gains a more systemic view of the issues. And then it also, as I talked about, uses commercial marketing technologies and theories. So it does use those. But at the heart of this approach is the exchange theory, the new behavior, and how it benefits and how it's seen as having higher value than the current behavior. So perhaps social marketing's principal contribution to social change, it could be the notion that voluntary human behavior is achieved through this exchange of values. And for this class, we, we use the social marketing approach um, and we considered these four questions as we went through it. So these are important to remember. So when you're going through, do you really understand your target audience and see things from their perspective or are you looking through your perspective? We know that oftentimes we see things through our perspective and it's really difficult to understand what they're seeing. And so we'll talk a little bit more about that. For example, um, we'll talk about journey mapping, walking in their shoes so that you don't see the problem through your eyes. So you look, you want to make sure you're clear about what you'd like them to do. And you know, do the benefits of doing what you want them to do outweigh the cost or barriers? So you have to look at that. And this is what our course did. We looked at all of these things. So, and also, are you using a combination of activities in order to encourage people to achieve the desired action? Okay, and this just kind of highlights 
the way the social marketing process works in order. You can kind of see we focused on providing an introduction to social marketing um, as this was completely a new process for many of our attendees. And though the process, through the process, we identified a problem, a behavior focus, priority population, we use segmentation, and they also defined some goals and objectives for their projects. Okay, and one of the um, components was they needed to select the behavioral focus. So when using a social marketing approach, it's about a behavior. So oftentimes we launch campaigns that are not about behaviors, they're about just awareness. But for social marketing, you're always looking at a distinct behavior. So not just about awareness. And so you are gonna select a behavior focus. And the characteristics of social marketing are observ an observable action. So for example, um, to understand it clearly, an example could be, so you might have a priority audience of men between the ages of 17 and 20. Uh, maybe they'll buckle up before placing the car in gear when driving a passenger vehicle. So you have a call to action and it's going to, that really is the centerpiece of your social marketing campaign. And these are examples uh, of behaviors used in social marketing. So you could choose, they could accept a new behavior, they could reject a potentially undesirable behavior, they can modify a current behavior. So if they're currently driving alone, you could, um, carpooling could be something, abandon an, an old undesirable behavior. So you might wanna get them might be looking at trying to get them to stop texting, um, encourage a one-time behavior such as taking a pledge, or establish a habit with a repeated behavior. So part of this is, part of this process, we conducted formative research. Now in the two-day class, and with just two days online, that's gonna be difficult to really conduct your research. So uh, we talked to our students about um, some of the research that they already had. And so many of them had reports that they brought to the class and they had different types of research that they used. Um, so that was part, um, that's an important part is our formative research. And really social marketing is based on data. And this, these are just some examples of um, data that uh, our students used and data comes from our audience it drives our decisions and so really the importance of knowing the audience is high you can see here uh, literature view participant observations you can uh, for example if you're trying to figure out um, pedestrian behavior you can go out in the street and observe what they're doing um, journey mapping we'll talk about that that's really walking in their shoes using focus groups in-depth interviews or surveys. These are not exhaustive, but these are some that the students use other what they can find before the workshop. Um, so Amy talked about the socio-ecological model in the class. And so this is um, something uh, that through her research um, that she has used in many of her programs. So this was something that really helped the students in looking at this. This is a model that was developed to further the understanding of the dynamic interrelations among various personal environmental factors. This one shows an example of walking to school, which we did have some groups uh, that looked at some school programs. And so this model shows that successful health promotion targets individuals and their environments. That's because our families, communities, interactions, and culture all affect how we act. So this diagram just gives you an example of how these all interact. And it starts out with systems and structures, institutions and organizations, neighborhood and community, and also the individual and family. And then we also applied segmentation techniques with each group. So you've probably heard the saying, if you're in marketing, that if you market to everyone, you're marketing to no one. And so we always have um, the groups segment their audience. And while all people and communities are different from each other, they can be grouped into segments. And you can see how these are some of the segments that they group them in. So an audience segments a group of individuals who share a set of common characteristics. You can see geographic, could be by state, region, neighborhood, subway station, climate, and so also demographic, psychographic, or behavioral. And then the really fun part, I think, of the, the class is that they develop personas, and you'll see some of their fun personas as we look at the case study. Um, so a marketing persona, it really is a composite sketch of a key segment of the audience. So it's fictitious, 
it's made up and they made the they made personas for each one of their groups and it really is a fictional representation of an actual user it comes in it really helps when you're focusing on who that individual is and so we went through a whole process of developing their personas but they're really vital to the success of a product because they drive design decisions by taking common user needs and bringing them to the forefront of planning and pers these personas really provided the teams with a shared understanding of users in terms of goals and capabilities. And once the personas are defined, going through a task analysis exercise with scenarios really offers an inexpensive way to test and prioritize features throughout the development. And so you can see here's an example. So this is a really fun activity that they did. Um, we brought in magazines and they um, decided their persona, they named their persona, you can see Patty the parent and Sierra the CEO, and each group um, had in each location. These are from uh, the Arlington group, and so you can see that they're looking at the personas and they are uh, really defining. These were um, during the length of the workshop. They hung these on the walls and looked at them, and oftentimes we found groups who were trying to market to someone outside the uh, persona, and so this really helped hone it in for them. So this is something that they can do anytime um, when they're working on a project is they can uh, develop their persona for the priori priority audience that they determined. So that was one of the fun um, activities that we did with our groups. Okay, and then journey mapping. This was another activity that we did. So this is really walking in their shoes to gain a customer point of view. Um, because again, sometimes we think we know what our customer wants, but then do we really? So, you know, this is, I just have a photo of somebody riding the bike. And so, you know, you, you may want to put a program together to get um, people to wear helmets. So if this was your, uh, persona, you may want to look at the journey that this person takes and see their different touch points. Um, Journey mapping is really a process to help you understand with the holistic view of the customer experience and you're going to uncover those moments of both frustration and delight throughout a series of interactions. And done successfully, it really reveals opportunities to satisfy those customer pain points, it alleviates fragmentation and ultimately differentiates your brand. So you're going to see it through your your customer's eyes and this is a really journey mapping is something you can easily do for any of your customers and it's going to give you a different view a different insights into what they need and what they want so you could take this separately and actually this is a skill if you know how to journey map you could use this for other projects and this is just an example of um, to give you a better idea of how a journey map works most of them are done with different photos. So, you know, you want to start out with the beginning stage. For example, if somebody is looking for a carpool, their first uh, stage may be an awareness stage. So how are they aware of the service you even offer? They may do research. Um, and then stage two, they're going to make their they're going to look at, they may take trials, they may do negotiations on which one they want to do. In stage three, you're going to look at delivery and use, support, feedback, and you can kind of see this at the bottom, you can see the touch points. So touch points are really looking at how they felt at each stage. When they decided to do their research, was it easy to find you? Was it easy to find your product? And so that's uh, something that you can do for anyone. And then you've probably heard of the four P's. So um, in social marketing, we do use the four P's of the marketing mix. So product, place, price, and promotion. And so that is a, a big part of their final uh, project. And you'll see that in the case studies. And then we also did pilot testing or pre-testing of their final product. And so um, that's also something that we heard feedback uh, actually during the sessions that once they learned that pre-testing was important, they started pre-testing things like their brochures and um, their websites, and they started pre-testing everything after they figured out that that was important to do. So really pre-testing shows you that you have a commitment to understand the consumer's wants and preferences, and you're gonna really offer them satisfying exchanges. And it's used to understand the consumer's response to messages, activities, concepts, and other program interventions. 
and this was really a key component in our workshops, is uh, learning how to pretest and getting feedback. And so it was a lot of fun to pretest some of their existing uh, collateral materials and things that they had. I think it opened their eyes that maybe the target market they thought they were going for really wasn't evident in the materials they, that they had. And many of them told us they were gonna go back and make revisions and uh, find out who that audience was and really look at what their wants and needs were through journey mapping and pretesting. Okay, so I know you've all been waiting to hear about the case studies and findings from the workshop. And so uh, there's a lot of information here. So I'm just going to touch on some of the different things so you get a feel of the three locations. So I'm just going to start out in order of um, of our the workshop. So we were uh, in Boise on March 27th and 28th. And uh, you can see one of the groups there sitting at one of the workshops. Um, Maureen is in the far right and they found this great facility for us. Um, it was set up to be very conducive to learning, which is important when you're holding workshops. And we had a really great group of people. Um, they all receive certificates if they completed um, all of the steps of the program. You can see in the far right is a picture of all of the participants. And so to begin with, um, we did create a background and uh, Boise, Idaho was really a great place to hold this. It's one of the fastest growing cities in the United States and they're experiencing different problems with transportation and the programs that commuter ride um, is their commuter assistance program. They operate the van pools and um, do all of the, the transportation demand management functions for uh, Boise and actually it's not just Boise I should say it's called the Treasure Valley area so we were looking at the entire area for their commuter assistance program so they um, have a larger area than just that uh, city and I just want to mention that because it was a larger area called Treasure Valley. Uh, so for each workshop, we always split into small groups because we had uh, people who wanted to work on different topics. And so you'll see the three topics they ended up choosing. So these are the three groups that we had in Boise. You can see how the middle group has their persona hanging on the wall. And so um, each group had their uh, personas there to help guide them as they worked through this. And so uh, we tried to make it as effective as possible to come out with come up with a plan that they could use in the end that they could really take back. So they identified that they had a big parking issue that they wanted to solve. And that was also something that was identified in Raleigh because um, those two sessions were uh, focused around the same people in the same groups. Arlington was a little different because we had people coming from all different areas, but it was interesting that both of these locations identified that the downtown parking uh, was something that they wanted to tackle, that that was a big problem and they wanted to focus their efforts. So in the surveys that we had, you know, we asked them, uh, what do you know about this problem once it was identified that that was something they wanted to look at? And these are just some of the thoughts they gave us back in surveys and in class. Um, they they think that downtown, some of these may be true or may just be perception, but this is what they told us. Um, downtown parking is at capacity, on-street parking meter, there was an on-street parking meter increase, which was effective right before we um, arrived. There's a large waiting list for monthly parking permits um, in the garages, so everything's full. It's a, it's a big fight and it's a big issue. And garage parking rates um, had risen to 120 to $135 monthly. And again, this was feedback that we got from them. Again, um, some of it may be their perceptions of the parking situation there. And also these were some of the challenges that they included in um, our surveys and class feedback forms. So this is how they, some of them viewed the downtown parking challenge. And again, this group was all tran transportation professionals. So um, they were all people that were in the field of transportation. So one person, for example, said too many people driving around downtown looking for the best parking place and that also was employees they said instead of walking more. Um, commuters commuter reluctance to consider other means than the single occupancy vehicle. And so, um, you know, most people are driving in their si single occupancy vehicle and they 
looked at that as an issue. Um, again, they just thought the downtown parking challenge was real and it was something that they wanted to look at solving. And they thought that they were in a good place for it as far as the growth that was happening in the Boise and Treasure Valley area. So then we looked at a behavioral focus. And so their focus is for the three groups. The first one chose that they wanted to increase the number of downtown uh, Boise businesses with over 50 employees adopted smart commute programs as part of their benefit package. So that was their behavioral focus for group one. Group two, you can see a, a van pool in that photo. They wanted to actually increase the number of downtown Boise employees using rideshare services as their commute mode. And they did whittle it down to, um, some different specific services and then the third one was a little different so this group wanted to increase the number of parents with young children to smart commute to the Boise downtown core so they had sort of a different um, technique on that so they wanted to increase those parents with young children to smart commute to the Boise downtown core so if you think about that they're gonna have to really work through that and they did to determine um, who their persona is and how they were going to get them to do that so this was team one, and so the case studies, um, with everyone's approval, we did get their approval to put their, their name and their position. Um, so if you see it, it was with approval in the case study. So you can see this team was a good mix. They had someone from the city of Boise, um, someone from Commuter Ride, the TDM agency that hosted us, uh, Valley Regional Transit, um, Kittleson Associates, a consulting firm, and then someone from the county, so from Ada County. Uh, Boise is located in Ada County. So you can see from that um, that that was a good mix. And we called them the commuting parents. That was the third one that I read. Um, so on each plan, you're going to see um, their social marketing plan. It includes throughout the course, they developed in groups their overall plan objective they identified their specific behavior. Um, also important was coming up with the positioning statement. Um, again, I was giving you a snapshot of social marketing, so this made sense, but I didn't talk about the positioning statement. And so their positioning statement um, is really about who are you? And so it is fictional, but we still got them to focus on being, you know, somewhat of a real group. So their positioning statement for this one, for example, was we are downtown employers interested in improving the lives of our employees who have elementary school children. And instead of driving your kids, Safe Routes to School builds connected communities by empowering kids to take a healthy and safe route to school. And, and you'll see their goal. They all came up with a goal. So we gave them a little course on uh, developing goals and objectives. And then again, they came up with their priority audience. And that's important because you want to come up with that one in priority audience. Um, suburban parents with elementary school age children. You can come up with more priority audiences, but for this workshop, uh, most of our groups just came up. Uh, and this is the second page of the plan. And so um, you can see the four P's that I talked about. And so, um, you know, this, this took several hours for them to come up with their product, their price, their place and promotion. And they came up with the strategies that go along with those. So you can see in the case study, you're going to uh, find out what their product was. And the product doesn't have to be something tangible. It can be a service. So um, especially with what we're doing with something for social good, oftentimes it is that. And um, we find people ha might um, often have a hard time understanding that the product isn't something um, tangible that you see. So this one shows the persona. It was a soccer mom. You can see uh, they have where they cut out and figured out who that soccer mom was. Her name was Allie Mission. She She's 36. Her occupation is office administrator. And then her profile, this is a snapshot of it. They had more information there, but just a snapshot was, for example, she owns a home in South Boise. She has two cars. She has two children. So you can see how this is working. You're, you know, you have your persona, you have your four P's, you have your positioning statements all coming together in your social marketing plan. And then finally at the bottom right, you have pre-testing plan. So they decided they were going to survey parents when they're dropping their kids off at school. Um, they're going to do individual interviews with the teachers and principals, and they're going to pre-test a video with a focus group, such as a school presentation. Now, this group, because we did have an after um, webinar with them to ask them 
what they had been doing and what was happening after the fact to see if they actually took this um, and put it into play. So they, there was no one on this group that was a safe routes to school local person. And from feedback, they found out that um, they talked to the safe routes to school person and then they were working through them and they learned so much more by talking to her. And this was something that they were looking at implementing through that program. Um, team two in Boise was engaged in employers. You can see we had a, a, a different mix of people. Um, so we had someone from the development corporation. Uh, we had someone from St. Luke's health system. So this was a good group and their overall plan objective was to encourage downtown Boise employers with over 50 employers to adopt smart commute programs as part of their benefit package. And so they had when I last talked to them, they had actually put this into play too. And you can see their persona. And so they were moving forward with this plan and they did have some uh, measurable results from that, from this workshop. And then for Boise, uh, team three, they wanted to increase the number of downtown Boise businesses with over 50 employees that choose to adopt smart commute programs. And so this one too, uh, the last time I talked to them, they were actually looking at uh, developing a new TMO in that area for downtown Boise or TMA. And so they had really put this plan into action too. It's exciting when we can see that they um, have taken and put this in practice. And this is the second page of theirs. You can see their downtown CEO, his name's John, he's 49. He is the CEO of a downtown Boise company with 50 employees. So that is who their persona is. That's who their person is, who they are going to uh, talk with about their program. Moving on to Raleigh, North Carolina. And again, we had to deal with several hurricanes affecting this program, but we did get a good group together. You can see uh, to the right, the photo of our attendees. Uh, they are from different, um, mostly from different employees. We were at Red Hat, which is a large employer again, and so we had a different uh, private sector along with we did have a mix in the end of some public sector people. So you can see uh, they're doing their work in those photos. And let's see, um, this is a snapshot of them uh, creating their personas. You can see as they work through the class, they are uh, looking at that and deciding how they really want to utilize the persona. Um, and these are more uh, photos. You can kind of get a feel of how the workshop worked. Uh, you can see they're, they're looking through magazines. They're uh, cutting those up. It was a lot of fun to create their persona. And this is just one of the case studies. Again, you can download the full case study. Um, so they were looking at go, a go pass for public transit, and they wanted to increase the number of downtown Raleigh employees using the go, go pass. And then we're gonna move on to Arlington, Texas. So this, this course was a lot of fun. We were there at uh, CTED's um, offices, headquarters there at the University of Texas Arlington. You can see in the photo on the bottom, we're standing right in front of the CTED location. And so we had a great group of people there. And again, this was a different um, situation where we had people coming from all other states, or not all other states, other cities. So this team um, was from Houston, and they were all from the Metropolitan Transit Authority of Harris County, Texas. So they, although people came from across the state, we grouped the, the four of them together because they were trying to create a program that they were going to take back um, to the Transit Authority and actually implement regarding van pool programs. So you can see the four of them who attended and their overall plan objective was to increase the number of employees van pooling to work. So great plan objective, you know, something they really wanted to implement and something that they wanted to do. They wanted to, their specific behavior was, so something they could um, document was have employees sign up for a van pool. Uh, their positioning statement was Metro Star Van Pool provides clean, reliable, safe, friendly, and cost-effective commute alternatives to solo drivers in under and underserved areas of the Houston Galveston region. Um, they had a priority audience of mid-career professionals living and working outside of the city center, especially young professionals and low-wage earners. You can see their persona was uh, Penny the Pincher, age 33, and so um, that is kind of a snapshot of their plan, and so they were going back to put that into action when they got back to the Transit Authority. Um, the second team in Arlington, this one was a, another commuting parents, although it was quite a bit different. It still kind of had that same theme. Their persona was Patty the parent, 
and their overall objective was to increase the number of parents carpooling to work. And their goal was to get parents to carpool at least one day a week. So they had a specific behavior. They wanted to make it so it was something they thought they could accomplish and uh, just figuring out how to do that behavior at, le at least one day per week. Um, they had a positioning statement where they're a local government group with a mission to reduce environmental impacts of employees who have elementary age school children. So if you look at the people in this group, we had someone from Travis County, Capital Metro, North Central Texas Council of Governments, and the City of Dallas Office of Environmental Quality. I'm not sure what happened with, with this group and I need to follow up with them again, but if you look at the makeup of that group, that could be a, a program that could be implemented and could have um, you know, some really good effects um, over the entire area. Their persona was the Patty the Parent, age 42, she's a CPA, and then they had a pretesting plan and they were going to pretest materials with community parents who care to ensure it is eye-catching, attention-getting. You can read through these um, uh, through each one after. Let's see, we have just a few more slides and we'll open up for questions. And I just want to talk about Team 3 because these were such great groups in Arlington. So we had someone from the University of Texas, someone from North Central Texas of Governments, TxDOT, and WCES, which was our... Uh, lone person from the state of Virginia. So she um, had a lot of great ideas and I think it was a great group. Uh, Ciara, the CEO, I had shown that previously, that was their persona. And this group, they wanted to address behaviors related to potential alternative transportation options uh, for commuters. They wanted to empower employers to address their specific needs with the implementation of employee transportation coordinators. If you're in the TDM field, you've heard of these ETCs. And they wanted to encourage commuters to take advantage of transportation resources and benefits. And so they had their priority audience was small but growing startups with environment and conscious young employees. And our last slide here, we have some student testimonials. Um, we always do um, evaluations and uh, we like just to hear back. And so you can see some of the student testimonials. Um, great learning experience, uh, the information and um, the, the fact that we made an actual proposal that we could use. I now understand the importance of pretesting. And so we heard a lot about people were also taking little bits of the things they used, such as the pretesting and journey mapping and really implementing that into uh, different uh, duties and different tasks that they were doing. And final slide, we just have a snapshot of all three groups. And again, we're in contact. Uh, uh, with most of these attendees, um, a lot of them had after questions. We did the follow-up workshop, and so I think it was a really great net networking opportunity for them. They got to meet people within their own cities or even uh, people outside their cities, for example, in Texas, and so those relationships I've heard have been long-lasting, and so these workshops have a lot of long-lasting benefits. And so that finishes up. Um, if you have questions, uh, questions, I guess we're going to facilitate some questions, and you can always reach me at jambond at usf.edu. Um, the link at the bottom is where uh, you can uh, download the case study, and then if you're interested in our 2019 Social Marketing and Transportation Certificate held here at USF in Tampa, there's a link for that too. So Abaya, I will turn the time over to you for, um, I guess we're going to do a and a session. Yes, uh, thank you so much, uh, Julie, for the presentation. It was very, very interesting. Um, and so, uh, like Julie mentioned, uh, there's the link to her slides. So what we're going to do is, and there's a question actually already about it, will the slides be available later? And, uh, or a video of the webinar? So yes, we are going to upload the video of the webinar for those who could not attend on YouTube and then put it onto uh, the, uh, project page of Julie Bonds on our on the CTED website and then if you would like we can um, send out the video to all of the attendees um, also uh, we uh, for the slides um, I know that this is not uh, um, I mean the slides I don't know Julie do you think that we can share the slides with them oh sure yes okay. um Okay, yes, we, can, we can share the slides. I can uh, send you a PDF and I'll also put that on our website of the slides and I have no problem with sharing the slides. Sure. Okay, okay perfect. And then the case studies as well, then will be, you know, you can, you can access the case studies from those slides as well. So then that'll be accessible for anyone who'd like to um, 
to get these resources. Yes. So um, let me see. Uh, we also have another question that says, do you have any recommendations for how to engage people for pre-testing? Any tips for success? Um, sure, yes. Yeah, so, so we do a lot of pre-testing here. Almost everything I do, uh, we pre-test. And so I'll just share with you a couple ways we've done it. Um, one way that takes a little bit uh, longer time is uh, we actually create an online um, survey in Qualtrics and we will pretest items that way because if you use Qualtrics they can for example um, click on different areas of say a brochure and uh, let you know like where their eye is drawn first you can ask them different questions and you can send that out to a large uh, broader audience um, easy ways to do it also is um, for example you may be on a work campus or here on a university campus um, oftentimes I will just go out and pretest um, with students but it depends on or employees it depends on you know again what you're pretesting so it depends on what you're pretesting but there are easy ways to do that for example um, we were just creating a new brochure so you know I've looked at it quite a bit. I want different um, people to look at that. So I just, you know, sent, sent that out to people and we have actually developed and I can, um, I could, I could share that too with pre-testing. And again, we do teach a course here um, that includes uh, quite a bit of information on pre-testing. So we have um, a set of questions that we've developed and you can uh, pick and choose from those questions. So they're, going to differ based on what you're pre-testing, like if it's a brochure or if it's maybe a PSA you're putting out or if it's a website, um, you want to pre-test all of those things before you launch them. And so again, I guess the easy way to do it is, um, you know, it just depends on what you're pre-testing, um, how many people you want to pre-test with. And again, I'd recommend you can take one of our classes and we can take you through a more in-depth uh, methods for pre-testing. Um, great. Uh, there's another question about where uh, were attendees familiar with social marketing prior to the workshops? Um, most of them were not. <laughs> so um, that's why, you know, when we began working with the host, um, we, you know, explained to them what social marketing was. Actually, one of the attendees at one of the sessions had uh, a few years ago taken one of the social marketing classes that we held here. So uh, there was a person that had taken it that was familiar, but you know, most of the, most of the attendees were not familiar with social marketing. So that was something new to them. And really the, the feedback from them was it was something that they really enjoyed. They saw the benefits of it. They could see how it could really be a game changer for what they were doing. And so, um, so yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then, do you have any experience approaching companies for a parking cash out program? If so, what challenges have you faced? Okay. Well, that's a good question. And um, that's kind of a, a, that can be a long answer for that. So I guess um, what I just recommend right now is that you know, we can further delve in parking cash out is is kind of an interesting type of program. So it just depends on, you know, who you're approaching, if you have, um, if, if they have a need to do that. And you can develop a whole social marketing program around that. And I was trying to think if someone did that, so I could send you an example, but you could develop a whole social marketing program around that and identify your uh, priority audience and how you're going to reach out to them. But, um, you know, in the past, it asked me personally, yes, I have done that, but I'm not, but, you know, I can speak to that individually with this person further because it's just going to really depend on what location you are and the different challenges that you're going to face uh, based on location. But again, that could be something that you could um, create a social marketing program around if that's something you're going to do um, a little bit more broad based. So, so yes, I mean, we can, I can answer that further with that individual um, and we can kind of delve into what they're looking at doing. And we do have uh, some informative um, case studies and information through our best workplaces for commuters program that would also uh, probably be valuable for that question. 
Yeah, and um, like Julie mentioned before, her email and her number are on there. So if there's anything that needs more elaborated elaboration, you can definitely uh, send her an email uh, for any of those questions. Um, so we have another one. Is there any follow up for participants who may not have implemented a project after the workshop? Um, sure. So we did um, provide a follow up webinar um, that was about 30 days after the session. And so the purpose of that was to talk to people about um, their program and to answer any further questions they have. Um, so we did do that follow-up webinar. And, and again, um, one interesting part that happened in Boise was they invited us back for their big event and we did um, present to a very large group about what happened in, um, just briefly what happened in the presentation and um, how they were utilizing that. So it was with public officials. And so we have been doing some follow-up um, again I, pro I need to probably follow up again and document some of the things that have happened because um, we did have participants, for example, I said in Boise, they were going to actually implement um, one of their programs and they were looking at uh, forming a TMA from that. And so um, I haven't heard from them for a couple months, but I definitely can follow up and post some of these findings on what people have done after the fact. Um, some of them, uh, some of the programs they came up with, you know, take time to implement. Um, they take uh, uh, some of them, like the Safe Routes to School, took finding that uh, coordinator locally and then following up. So it really depends on, you know, what program you were going to utilize. But again, I just want to stress that some of these features in this you can use, you know, immediately, you know, like the pre-testing and the journey mapping is really a great one. We have um, a couple individuals I know who have taken um, the social marketing courses and, and they just do the journey mapping so they, they can step in their customer's shoes. And so that's just an easy way to take something from this course that you can use um, whenever if you want to get a better view of what your customer um, is experiencing and not what you think they're experiencing. Um, okay, and uh, do you have any experience approaching companies? Oh, sorry, that was already yeah, yeah, um, because that person posted in both places. Um, okay, so, what program was the most successful from the series, in your opinion, and did you think made it successful? Okay, well, that's a hard one because um, you know, like I said, they were so different and everyone worked really so hard in all three of the um, different locations that we went to. So, you know, I wouldn't want to single anyone out as saying it was more success successful because um, everyone worked hard. Everyone had something that they were going to take back to their um, employer and talk about. And so um, I know there was one group who actually had, you know, a meeting set up immediately when they got back and they were going to have to present again and their findings and what they had done. And so, I mean, it was just, they were so different. As I said, there were kind of three different um, you know, segments, they were three different uh, really great case studies to look at because, you know, working more with the employers as, you know, transportation professionals um, and then, uh, you know, recruiting people from from different cities. It's all just, they're, they're all three kind of different models and everybody was successful that attended. Everyone learned something. And so it was, you know, in the end, it was, it was a really great uh, program. These are really good courses and I recommend, you know, them for, for anyone to take. Um, and are you open to conducting the workshops in other cities? How would how can they coordinate something like that with you? I'm sure we um, here at Cutter are open to that. We do have, as I said, our uh, social marketing certificate program that is here in Tampa in December. We ha hold that each December. Um, uh, Phil Winters here at Cutter um, is the head of that program, and we are open to. Uh, you know, talking to people about um, taking that to different locations, you can just email me and then we could, um, you know, see what the expectations are and how we could work with you on that. Perfect. Um, and then do you have any recommendations on guiding individuals to create a journey map? Um, sure. So we um, actually have quite a few really easy to do worksheets for the journey map and you know those are in our workbook and so um, we can we can share those with you but really you know we've 
you can do a journey map just as easy as plotting out somebody's experience, like I said, and, and going and finding a carpool matching list. Um, I've done the journey mapping for um, biking to work, and that's kind of a fun one because you can take photos, but then you're going to look at those touch points. You're going to see what you can make better if you're trying to um, encourage people to bike to work. So the journey mapping can, can really be used um, in any situation where you wanna really put yourself in the customer's shoes. And you can email me again and I can send you um, some different worksheets we have in creating your journey map. We have some really great examples because that was the homework also. So everyone created a journey map who took the class. So they were so diverse. I mean, there were journey maps for all different types of journeys and everyone did it a little differently and uh, people went out and took photos of their journey and then they kind of put them together in a PowerPoint presentation or they you know found um, different screenshots of them going through a website and so we have a lot of different material that can help you through the journey mapping and we do have a couple courses online that do cover that that I'm not sure if they're coming up but we can uh, you can go to the commuterservices.com uh, commuter commuter choice training insight and we have a list of our courses so there might be one coming up that you could take on journey mapping because that really is a, uh, a great course and a great way to just do something that's going to make an immediate impact maybe on your program you can look at it from a different point of view um, so someone's asking if we can email out those mapping templates to attendees um, so uh, would, would that be feasible with you yeah, I mean, we can, whatever you'd like to do, I can uh, gather some of those and we can uh, put them either on this, uh, on the site where you're putting everything to, so. Yeah, no, I think that'd be great. Um, uh, we're going to, uh, we usually, uh, we send out a newsletter every week and which has a what you missed part and then we will be uploading this video, the PowerPoint slides uh, in PDF format and then the case studies and then maybe some templates. Okay. Of the map. Uh, of journey mapping and then maybe uh, that could be useful and then we could send it out and then to the specific specifically to the attendees we can also uh, send all of this material separately but we will be adding everyone who has attended here their email addresses to the, our listserv so that'll be um, we, we can um, we'll sign up for I uh, will send that newsletter on um, and then uh, so does any does every journey map have to be a real trip? Should it be done by some someone uh, like your persona? Um, yeah, no, you could um, depending on who your persona is and um, it, it, it can be it doesn't have to be a real trip. I mean, the persona is, is fictional and you could, um, for example, base it on, uh, you know, really any kind of trip, but as you're going through it, it really helps if you're doing the journey mapping to think of it as someone's real journey, but you can do uh, different journeys based on who you think your customer could be. And again, the persona is a fictitious person that you're looking at and that's how you're gearing your program around. So, um, you know, there are different ways to do it. And again, it just depends on, um, you know, what that journey is and, you know, if it's something that you want to look at that is in your realm of making it better for that customer, because you're going to document those uh, touch points where you can reach them. So, for example, you can look at a journey and, and, you know, if somebody's walking by this same bus stop every day, that might be a place that you can reach them, for example, with some type of intervention. Um, it, you know, it could be some type of advertising. So, so those are kind of the touch points you're going to look at on a journey. So it depends on what you're doing. And again, the main part is you're walking in their shoes to, to see it through their eyes and not through what you think the journey is about. Um, and then uh, can we, how can we sign up for the newsletter? Like I, I mentioned, we're going to add everyone on here. And if you would like to sign up yourself, uh, you can go to CTED uh dot uta dot edu uh which is our main website and on the home page there's going to be an option where it says subscribe to our newsletter so you can put in your email address and then you will automatically be added um so you can also do it that way and then uh somebody asked when is the next course um maybe they're referring to the workshop if and I know you mentioned something about um, hosting them in Cutter, so maybe. Yes, our next, you can click on that link and um, it's the first 
week or second week in December. I just don't have that right in front of me, but it's going to be the first uh, part of December. So you can click on that link and uh, there's information about the class and how to attend and everything at that link. So it's the first part of December of this year. Great. Um, I think we've uh, we've answered all questions and we actually don't have time for any more, but thank you so much for joining us. Uh, again, if you do have any more questions, you please feel free to reach out to Julie Bond uh, at jmbond.usf.ed.edu. And then we also have our CTED uh, information on the right side of the slide. Uh, you can contact us, you can email us, um, and you can follow us on all these social media platforms. We will be sending out all these materials to the attendees and then also putting them on our newsletter so you, you, can, you will have all of this. Um, and please do uh, keep um, in mind uh, of, in that we will be having some other webinars, upcoming webinars, and we'll keep you posted on those dates and times. And thank you so much, for uh, Julie, for, uh, for hosting this presentation. Oh, yes, my pleasure. Um, and thank you so much, everyone, for attending. Those were great, great questions. And uh, please contact me anytime at my email and click on the links, and you can learn more about uh, the social marketing programs we have here. All right, thank you. Take care. Thank you. Bye.